The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. All right, folks, how are you doing today? Welcome here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour with Daryl Martin. Feel free to give me a call with any questions that you have at one 927 6648 and so let's go ahead and dive into it and uh, do what we do each and every day is make sure you're up to date on what's going on in the markets. And so the first thing we always like to look at is the current uh, change in the market. The S&P right now on the future side is uh, down nine and a quarter points. The Russell's down three. The NASDAQ is down 12 and the Dow is down 103 points, 104 points still going. And then uh, looking over at our metals, we got copper, which is basically flat on the day. And gold is also pretty flat, and silver is pretty flat. So really the metals across the board not doing much right now compared to yesterday's close. Natural gas is down about half a percent right now. We've got oil down 41 cents. And we got uh, looking over at the ags, we got the uh, corn is down 6, and the soybeans moving every single day lately, down 22 points. And uh, don't forget, you can trade soybeans over on Nadex. So uh, it's always a good thing to remember that you have the advantage, you have the ability to do that. Now, something else to look at here, we got uh, the currency. So what's going on on that side? Well, euro dollar at this moment is actually pretty flat. Um, Aussie dollar is up 22 pips over yesterday's close. And uh, pound dollar is up 8 pips, though they have been uh, pulling back. And then looking over at the U.S. franc, it's down 12 pips. We got the U.S. CAD up 22. And we got the U.S. yen down 6 pips right now. So now let's go ahead and check out our fundamentals, what has been going on overnight. And by the way, if you're on Tiger TV and the Tiger's in right now, I do have the uh, deviation levels posted. You can check those out and look at them while they're up there. And um, I'll be going over and just doing a quick run through on them pretty soon here, but you can see sort of what the half and you know one deviation levels are for the day. And uh, there's a lot of different ways to use them. We'll talk about a couple of those ways uh, here in a little bit. Now going on through and looking at um, the news for the day and what's happened, really not a whole lot as far as just government news announcements, okay? So we did have a few things come in last night, like, you know, French industrial production and tower industrial production, which were actually good. They, they didn't come in horrible at all. Um, and you had the Bank of Japan, you know, they're doing their little speech. They seem to be in, a, in the news on a pretty consistent basis here lately. And... Uh, you know, so there's not a whole lot on that front. Looking over, you know, the U.S. side here, we had host elementaries. They came in at expectations. The uh, U.S. bonds actually ticked lower than the last uh, 10-year bond auction. And then the beige book um, literally is coming out here in about, you know, 50 minutes or so. So you'll be able to check that out and see what that is. What is the beige book? Well, it's released by the Federal Reserve. And um, it comes out eight times a year, a couple weeks before each FOMC meeting. That's actually when they release the uh, beige book. And it's used by the FOMC to basically help them make their next interest rate decision is sort of the idea behind the beige book. But it really tends to you know, produce a mild impact because um, the FOMC also gets two non-public books, books they're not sharing, called the green book and the blue book. <laughs> and um, you, know, you think about you know, the blue book value of a car, things like that. But they have the green book and the blue book, which are um, be a lot, basically everybody thinks that those are a lot more influential in their rate decision than the beige book. So people don't really have a lot of you know umph when they look at the beige book. It may give them a couple clues, but it's uh, it's very you know anecdotal and uh, it, you know, it's, it's very you know, evidence that uh, supplied. And again, the Federal Reserve puts it out multiple times a year. So that one's coming out here at one o'clock. You know. And you may so you may just you know want to be prepared for that, but again, it's usually not a big market mover at all. Now, um, and, and a lot of it affects again the interest rate decision, which they've already been pretty clear about how they're keeping that there and where it's at for quite a while. Now, looking over at you know just tonight on the fundamental side of things and seeing what we got coming up. Um, New Zealand's going to have a few reports coming out. Not a big thing. Um, not a, not big reports. Uh, Japan is going to have a couple reports come out. 
Um, the core machinery orders and their monetary policy meeting minutes are going to be released. And, um, and then the Aussie is going to have a big night. So it's kind of gonna, they're going to release uh, their inflation expectations, their employment change, and their unemployment rate. And it has been getting more and more and more challenging for the Aussie uh, lately. So despite uh, lowered interest rates, there's still a lot of pessimistic outlook within the country. And um, so it's really not been a great thing for them. So this is going to be big on this employment change unemployment rate. So that's sort of your, you know, your trade set up for the evening is checking out the Aussie dollar, 730 Central, 830 Eastern. Also, G7 meetings have kicked off today. So uh, that's going to be a big thing. And, um, you know, that'll, you know, whatever announcements come out of that, press conferences, et cetera, um, will, of course, have an impact on the market. And I think we've seen a little bit of that. Um, again, the G7 is not an institution. It's, uh, you know, just if you're new to Forge, you don't know what the G7 is. It's Canada, Italy, France, Germany, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States. And, again, the meeting's closed, but they come out and they do little, you know, conversations here and there um, in between the meetings. Now, as far as um, setting up for tomorrow, um, we're going to have, you know, a couple other basic reports come out, and then we're going to head into the early morning where there's going to be a trade balance report come out of Canada. Um, there'll be a couple other reports early in the morning, but they're not really expected to be any kind of high-impact reports. And then the U.S. will also have its trade balance at 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. And that's basically how much is going out versus how much is coming in. So that can have an effect on the U.S.-Canadian um, especially, you know, depending upon if they're, you know, in line or conflicting um, on the expectations. The trade balance report on ca um, Canada is to be negative 1.8 billion, and the U.S. is supposed to be negative 44 billion. Also, we have the unemployment claims report coming out. They expect it to come in at 369,000. And looking a little bit lower, we've got natural gas storage, so don't forget about that report. Um, you can trade that uh, easily using binaries or spreads. Um, and that comes out every Thursday at 9.30 a.m., 10.30 Central. And we got, let's see, uh, the federal budget balance report. I expect that actually might be a moving event. It's usually not a big moving event. But with the you know the coming fiscal cliff, the debt ceiling issue, and all that is basically going to indicate whether we have, you know, basically what's going on, how much money is the government bringing in versus how much is it spending. Therefore, how fast is it going to run over that uh, debt ceiling? So that, again, is going to come out at 1 o'clock Central, 2 o'clock tomorrow right here in the U.S. And we look over a few other things. Nothing really major uh, beyond that for Thursday. And then Friday, we're going to have the, uh, the PPI come out at 7.30, 8.30 Eastern. And then we're going to have a preliminary, uh, which is an inflation report. Then we're going to have a preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report coming out um, at, let's see here, 8.55. So basically, you know, how people are feeling about the market. And uh, that really is going to wrap up uh, most of the news. Um, China is going to have their trade balance report come out as well on Friday, but it's the time is who knows. <laughs> so there's not just a whole lot of consistency right there right now. But that's really the fundamentals for the week. And, you know, we can go ahead and check out where everything's else um, happening. Also, oh, by the way, don't forget the IMF meetings are also kicking off and they're going to start up um, on Thursday. So you got G7 going on and then you got the IMF meetings going on. And so, um, and they'll go Thursday, Friday, and they'll wrap up their meeting on Saturday. And, um, you know, it's not anything official, but they will talk with reporters. It is an open thing that people can come in. Reporters can listen um, throughout the day, and they can ask questions as well at the press conferences in between. So, you know, with all those reports coming out, there's been, of course, a lot of news come out about how the whole global economy, um, Asia, Europe, U.S., they're, they're, you know, the World Bank, the IMF, is lowering expectations um, in Asia, Europe, and the U.S. So that's, of course, been a you know, negative impact on everything this week. Also, uh, Reed Wells Fargo got a suit um, by the federal government basically suing them for issuing mortgages that they should not have issued by incentivizing their officers to go out and get as many mortgages as possible, uh, which put the federal government in a bad spot because it had to back all those loans and uh, basically you know, trying to make it look like those loans are better than they were, et cetera, et cetera. The whole the thing that just amazes me about this entire thing is back in the 90s and <laughs> early 2000s, you know, Clinton and Geithner got together and they're the ones that said everybody should own a home. OK, and they're the ones that relaxed all the regulations and tried to make it really easy for everybody to get home loans. Now, I'm not saying that Bush shouldn't have stepped in and fixed some things. OK, I'm not going all pro there. All I'm saying is the federal government, period. I don't I'm not picking sides at this at all. The federal government is the one that asked the bank to go and issue a loan to every single person who made an application, basically. 
And now they're going after the banks for doing exactly what they said. And they said, by the way, give everybody all these loans and we'll guarantee them if you go through this program. So basically, go collect interest on people on 100000 and 200000 three and four and 500000 dollar loans, and we'll guarantee that you won't lose any money and you can keep the interest. I mean, that's just really? You you wonder why they went out and issued loans like crazy. You gave them permission. You told them they wouldn't lose any money if they did it, and now you're upset that they did. So it's, I mean, it's like, when is it going to turn around and they're going to look at Congress for passing that? <laughs> you know, I know nobody likes to go after Clinton and et cetera, et cetera, whatever, but Clinton did that, and then Geithner's the guy that, that led the whole charge, and he's still there, which is amazing. But, uh, you know, that's just, that's just how it goes. That's politics, right? So they're trying to look good and act like they're cracking down on people. Um, but going into Monday, we'll be picking up on some other stuff. We're going to have, you know, core retail sales, retail sales, kicking off the week. So that ought to make uh, things pretty interesting. Of course, we're also, uh, you know, officially into or unofficially officially into earnings season. And, um, you know, Alcoa not looking so good. And, you know, across the board, we'll see, you know, some bank um, earnings coming out. Those look like they may be good. We'll see. Uh, but uh, earnings is sort of what it's all about at the moment, except for, of course, Spain, if they blow up or whatever happens, or also they have like 8% yields on a Spanish bond auction or something like that. That might be a problem. But uh, beyond that, we should be okay. Uh, it's just really people are going to be focusing on earnings and, you know, just, of course, any news out of Europe right now is just spooking the entire thing. And um, anyways, we go in, but uh, we'll look at a few of the other pieces of just news in general and what is going on that you might want to be thinking about. There's sort of some good news uh, coming out of Greece. Their economy is getting worse, but their deficit is getting better because they're cutting like crazy. Um, and, of course, you know, over in Spain, they're rioting because they're going through, and instead of having the European Union force them to do austerity measures, they're just doing them anyway. And I mean, it's just crazy. France, like 75% um, income tax on millionaires, and they wonder, like, they think they're going to get better. Like, the millionaires aren't going to leave. <laughs> just move. You know, uh, it's just amazing. And so, that, you know, that's some of the stuff going on over there right now. And there's just a lot of different turnover and stuff happening in jobs. And we're going to see a lot of, you know, holiday hiring coming in, the unemployment claims dropping off. And there's, you know, been a druggie had his testimony that did not excite anybody. And um, they're trying to figure out how to, what, the, what are they going to do with all these assets that the Fed has? I know that's one of the big concerns right now. How do they unwind all these assets without causing it hyperinflation? And that that's really going to be the big trick. And we'll see if uh, Bernanke, you know, he thinks he saved everything, um, which, you know, we can tell he didn't. But, you know, the real the real judge of history will be whether or not hyperinflation happens after this. So if he can pull that one off, I mean, yeah, anybody can print money and do all these things that he's done. And he really, you know, welded every tool that the Fed had in his power. But can they actually unwind all that inflationary printing and not destroy the currency at the same time? And that is yet to be seen. So stay right there, folks. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about these deviation levels, where they're at right now, and what they mean to your trading. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Training Out here with Daryl Martin. And, uh, again, if you have any questions, please give me a call, 877-927-6648. And we just wrapped up looking at some of the fundamentals. We went into where the market was. We talked about some of the government news announcement that's sitting out there. And now we're going to go and we're going to check out just a few of these deviation levels and sort of just show you, you know, how they work. So looking at the S&P, and uh, right here I got my Fibonacci extensions from yesterday, and you can definitely tell they uh, pushed on down pretty good. But uh, let me go ahead and I'll pull these off. But, uh, yeah, bouncing right there at the 62% um, and then holding strong there, 61.8, I guess, if you want to get detailed about it. And let me just uh, remove my drawings here. Let's see. We delete drawings. All drawings. All right. Yes. There we go. Okay. So moving on down and looking at, you know, where the market moved to today. So we got the market... Move down to a low of 1424, and we're really looking for half deviation moves for making um, decisions. That really helps us out a lot. And you can tell, obviously, we didn't really get anything. The market was really flat this morning, and uh, didn't do much of anything for the first couple hours. Then finally decided to wake up a little bit and drop some, but it still has not dropped that much. And uh, the drop did at least have some volume, so that you know that's good in the sense of you know as far as looking for you know a little bit of confirmation and direction is we did have some volume right here on this drop, this break down right here. But then what happened? Well, we had a little bit of uptick in volume on the downside, but we're still ha having some maintaining that volume even on the pullback. 
So not really showing a whole lot of strength to the downside. So really nothing to check out right now on the S&P as far as that's concerned. We can go over and we can check out the Russell. Now, I know the one that we are going to be checking out here is the Dow here. We'll look at that, and that'll have a little bit more to it. And, um, you know, 821 is the low. I mean, that's nothing compared to a close of 825 yesterday. That's not even a half deviation move. Looking over at NQ uh, and the E-mini NASDAQ there down to 2718. Still not even a half move. So not a whole lot you can do with that. And let's uh, go over and check out the Dow. And um, it, of course, is being impacted a lot more by earnings. 30 stocks in the thing is going to, um, you know, have a bigger impact. And uh, But there's also a lot of volatility built into it because earnings are coming out. So therefore, the deviation levels will get a little wider. But um, it basically has a half deviation expectation of down to 13 to 95. So right there, you can see half deviation. And I'll even zoom in on it for you. There you go. Half deviation, 13 to 95 right here. Okay. And so we go over here and we pull up the Dow which actually has, like I said, moved a little bit. And we got a low with uh, 13,296. So it basically hit that half deviation level, and it has paused. So um, what do you do? Well, if you're short the Dow, this is where you tighten your stops. It's pretty simple. So uh, this is where you're like, okay, you know what? This is definitely a place where it could reverse. And so you'd want to definitely move your stop down um, if you capture a half deviation move, a full deviation move, a 0.7 deviation move on a consistent basis, you're doing great. So if you get stopped out of this, that's okay. Uh, you just want to make sure that you at least do tighten your stops. You know, or at least tighten your stop on half and move the other half to break even. So as another potential, you know, if you're getting in right here, this would be, uh, you know, basically your ideal entry price on this. You got that move down. You had a pullback with lowering volume, and then it started to decline again. So this is where the entry would be like one. I'm basically getting a tick below right here. So 13.370, so 13.3, you know, 69, going short. I have a little volume uh, confirmation, so hey, I'm good with that. There's a pullback, so I'm going to move my stop down to here. I'm at least going to have a stop right here no matter what on half, on all my position, okay? And then once I all of a sudden I see that I'm at this half deviation level, then I'm basically looking for any kind of pullback I can have any excuse on. And so this one right here, just to stop right above a high 13.316 would basically be where you'd want to have your other stop. And um, so I'd recommend if you're short right now, you put a half stop, basically half your position at least stopped right there, the other half right here to give it, you know this a little bit of room to maybe move around during this lunch hour before things uh, hopefully continue if you are short and you're able to take advantage of that trade. But that half deviation is basically says, hey, wake up, tighten your stops, okay? Um, especially, you know, when you're seeing, you know, like if your volume isn't like improving. Now, if it's starting to break through, that's even better. But uh, if your volume is going in the wrong direction, meaning the market's moving down but on lighter volume, then you know that's a point where you're going to need to back off and say, you know what, I probably need to go ahead and uh, tighten my stops, maybe even take my profits, and uh, maybe go the other direction, especially if you see the volume just flipping. In other words, volume's getting really low on the way down, but you're starting to see volume on the way back up off that deviation level. That's a great sign for flipping around and going the other direction. And the deviation level is that point that tells you, hey, wake up, there's a trade here. And, uh, you know, just be aware of that. And uh, notice, like I said, it's just right off the deviation level, like a tick off of that. So that's the Dow. We'll go ahead and hop through and we'll look at the metals and a couple of the other ones here right after the commercial break. Make sure to call in if you got any questions. Be right back after this break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We're running through and sort of looking at these. Like I said, there's really just not a whole lot of movement going on across the board. But uh, we can always check it out to sort of see how things have moved. We got copper, it's down um, low at 3.6934. And um, as you can see, not even hitting that half deviation. So it really is helpful for helping you see like what the trading ranges are. And it also lets you know, hey, is this thing actually moving? Okay, so is it actually moving to the expected move that's in the market right now? And um, copper just is not doing that. So it's not moving you know, anything in line with the expectations um, at all. So um, as far as, you know, today anyway, and how far the, not I think, but how far the market is saying the market actually has uh, the ability to move. And uh, we get that, of course, by pulling the implied uh, volatility out of the options. And that's where that information comes from. Now, looking over at the uh, gold contract, we can see we had a move up and a move down, but it stayed within. And uh, let's see here if I can zoom out a little bit there for you. Uh, but it has stayed so far, gold, within this deviation range of 1740 to 1782. So often we do see it break out of these deviations or hit them you know, pretty hard, but uh, nothing major there. And we'll see the same thing on silver, even with its um, you know, big up and down move right now. Let's see, it's high that it's pushed so far as 34.194. And we're looking over here at silver, 34.59. You know, so if it actually was going to continue to climb, then this would be sort of the first profit target that we've had. So let's say you're long silver today, 
then you know that's what you could look at as far as going in and saying, hey, I think I want to, you know, I'm buying silver. Where do I want to look at my profit? Um, first initial profit goal, 34.59 would be a potential uh, profit goal, at least or at least a point where you start to tighten stops. Now you wind that up with fibs, and you wind it up with, you know, you're just looking at the volume, and you can tie those things together, and it gives you, you know, a really good idea. Uh, like I said, if the volume's not working for you, then that's when you really, really want to be tightening um, that stop, like, quick. And uh, so, you know, for instance, on the Dow, we came over here and uh, we just talked about how it was down the deviation level there. And but notice, I mean, we broke this low right here, okay, on the day. And like so far, and you know, the bar's not closed yet here. It's got four more minutes. But the uh, volume's been pretty anemic on this latest break. And again, this, this was the deviation level right here as we saw on the Dow. Uh, I'm going in and looking at the Dow Industrial Average, 13.295. And our low right now is 13, now 13,293. But when we looked at it in the last session, it's 13,296. So it basically just punched right through that deviation just with a couple ticks. And, um, and again, without any kind of incredible volume. And if we do get volume at this point, the way it's going, it could be up volume. And uh, so this is, like I said, a very strong, you know, potential to have a reversal of buy signal. So, you know, what could you do if you did want to go long the Dow at this point? What could you do if you want to go short? Well, of course, you can always buy or sell the Dow, um, the futures themselves, or you can go in and do it with the diamonds, or you could do limited risk uh, contract trading, um, where you go over and you trade over on Nadex. Now, if you don't have a Nadex account already, definitely hop on and get one. I mean, you can get a demo account in 15 seconds. So just uh, go to TFNN.com, and once you're on TFNN.com, then click on the Nadex banner and click on Create Account. Now, for a live account, it takes, you know, five minutes from start to fund it, okay? And you can only, only have to put a fund $100 and have a live funded account with live everything, okay? And um, so getting start to funded, just click that start button and less than five minutes. Demo account, pretty quick, just click on demo account, put in a username, first name, last name, phone, email address, and apply for demo. You'll get the email in a few seconds. You can log in right away. And um, a lot of times we're placing trades, we're looking at things on here, and this is a way for you to be able to follow along. So I uh, definitely recommend that you get that demo account right away. And ideally get the live account just so you can see, even if you only put the minimum in there, just so you can actually see what's going on with the account. Now, um, once you do that, then like I said, you can log in and um, you can see what your trading options are. You know, do you want to go long? Do you want to short? Do you want to straddle? Okay. So what is straddle? It's where you, you know, basically you're saying, I don't know which way it's going to go, but I don't expect it to stay right here. So we can go in and we can put a straddle on. And I have a few trades on right now, but uh, let me pull this up here and we'll uh, check it out and just sort of see what some of the you know options are we have available to us. And uh, show you this one. All right, here we go. So here's just uh, you know, this is what's going to happen right here when you log into your demo account. Then you'll be able to see all the trades that are available for you currently. And uh, let's see here. We'll don't need that. Don't need that. And. Don't really need that open, so let's go ahead and check out the Dow here. So we got the indices, and we can do bull spreads or binaries. So if we go over to binaries, um, then we can look at, you know, like I, said, the, like I said, the Dow right here. We're looking at the Wall Street 30. That's the one that follows the Dow. And we can see, you know, what plays exist right now with the Dow sitting right at 13, you know, 300 there. And I'll see if I can keep this on the screen. That way we can sort of watch the price while we're checking it out. And um, we can even narrow this down a little bit more. There we go. And now I can go over here and go, okay, well, let's check out. We have the ones that expire at 2 o'clock, okay, which is, you know, just right around the quarter, literally. So uh, 20 minutes from now. And see if there's anything we like. So you have a, basically a 50-50 trade right here, straight right at where the market's at, 13300 okay? And this is a binary. So if you buy this binary, you're saying, you know what, I think the uh, Dow will close above 13300 And you're saying at 2 o'clock, so here in 20 minutes. If you sell it, you're saying, I think it won't close above it. It's pretty much that simple, okay? That's all you're doing. So if I buy, it will close above it, sell it, it won't. Or it'll be equal to or less than, meaning won't, because it has to be greater than to be true. So it has to be less than or equal to to be false. And it's really simple to place an order. So let's say you want to do um, a sell order. You think it is going to close below it. Let's go ahead and hit sell. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to hit, you know, one contract. And then we're going to hit place order. So I put the order in, it's done. I can check out my open positions. And now I have my Wall Street 30 binary on there. 
So now if I thought it was going to go long, you know, then I'd have to buy it. If I thought, you know, the market was going to go up, if I thought it was going to close above 13300 here in the next 20 minutes. So if it stays on down, if it keeps going down, then I'll win on this trade and I'll win the maximum profit on the trade. Now, that's a very short binary that only has 20 minutes till expiration. Okay. Now, I can also go over here and I can look at the one to three. So right now I have the, again, I have the short position on the Dow at this moment. And um, I'm going to go over here and got so much active data going on, it's trying to bleed through my screen. All right, we'll tighten this up. There we go. Yeah, so he's taking off. All right. So we got that one. And now we can go over here and we can look at some, what other opportunities we have. The nice thing about the, there's there's a good and the bad to the short. The good of the short is, hey, if you think it's about to move big, then you can go in and you can make some money pretty fast. Um, if you don't think it's going to move fast, then... You know, that can affect you as well. But, I mean, you can see how big these can uh, change in price right here. So we just sold that, and uh, it's already down to $26. So we already have a 50% return, <laughs> basically, on our trade. Um, so it's just dropping. It's dropping pretty fast there. And it's really good for you to see how fast these can move because this can let you understand the importance of, you know, if you're going in. Now, this one is a 20-minute trade. I'm really putting it in. I'm putting $50 in the trade, basically $50 risk, $50 reward, you know, give or take a couple bucks. And uh, so, you know, this one I'm looking at probably, you know, leaving on. I could close it out at any given moment that I wanted to. And uh, you can see, we'll move this over. My average entry on the trade is 46. So let's just say I decided to go in and close the trade out. Okay. So I could leave it on or I can close it out. Well, if I close it out right now, when it's at $26, I make $20 on the trade. So I'll go ahead and hit place order. And trade closed out. I made 20 bucks on the trade. It literally, I mean, what that do? That took me two minutes, okay? So $20 profit on the trade um, and 50% return on investment. Also 50% return on risk. So it's not a great risk reward on that one, but it is a you know great return for two minutes, 50%. Uh, now you can take it further and you can go, okay, well, I want one that's going to have a little more time in it, okay? So we can go over here and we can check out the ones that expire at 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central Time. And when doing that, we can go, okay, well, what strikes are there? And you can always drag this stuff around. You can even move these windows. So it's, they make it really easy for you to go in and you know edit it. And uh, you can even go in, by the way, and you can remove things. Like, I don't care what time it last updated. And I know they're all going to expire today because I'm on the dailies, right? And um, let's see here. that you know, So I can get rid of basically those options right there. Quick display, it just makes it shorter and I have the information on there that I actually care about looking at. Now, and it's continued to drop. So if you're still in, then your profit's even higher. And uh, we can go back and look at, you know, where's it? Now it's at $14, another $10 profit in the last minute. Okay, so I mean, they really do go fast. All right, $13. So it's going, 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 going. And um, definitely by now, you'd be looking to getting pretty close to taking off your profit. Um, you don't have to move up a little ways and you'd be knocked out of the trade. So. Not a bad trade, and uh, especially not bad, like I said, for a couple of minutes. So if we go over here, we look at the 1 to 3 o'clock. What do we got going on? Well, now we have a 13,282 that we could look at, okay, which is right around where the market's at. Notice how when it's at where the market is, $50, okay? So it's at the money. That's what that means, all right? So the strike, 13,282, is where the Dow is right now, 13,282. And these strikes are preset. It, or When it opened, it was at 13,322. That's when these, these three were posted. I know that because the middle one will be right where the market is. So it's at 13,282. It's at the money. And uh, so when you got those, that's when you got like those 50-50 trades, okay, one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. And um, so it can really, you know, work out well for you depending on how you want to do the trade. If you want to put another one on, you can take this. Now, it won't move as fast, okay, as the one that expires in 20 minutes. Because what you're saying is at the end, it either has to be worth one, or I'm sorry, it has to be either worth a Z, like zero bucks or a hundred bucks. So at expiration, it has to be worth zero or 100. So when you understand that, meaning there's a 50-50 chance right now that it'll actually be at 13 to you know, 82, okay? But if it's at 13 to 85, one minute before expiration versus at 13 to 85, an hour before expiration, obviously there's a difference in probability that it'll be above or below that price of that strike. And, um, you know, you can hop in on these trades, very low risk, like I said, and um, take advantage of them. You can also go down here to dailies, and this will give you a lot wider range that you can take advantage of. 
And so you can go down here and go, you know what, I don't want to do as high of a risk one. Maybe I want to do one that only has $30 risk. And I can do place order on that. And that puts that trade in. That's a $30 risk trade. And what I'm saying on that is it would be below 13 to 50 Okay? And um, if it is below that, then, you know what, hey, I make $70 on a $30 risk if I hold it till expiration. Now, I don't have to hold it till expiration. I can wait. So, uh, I mean, I cannot wait. I can close it earlier. And uh, so if it keeps moving down, I decide I want to get out of the trade and get out. Now, what price will it be at? And this is sort of a very helpful tip. What price will the binary be when it gets to my price? So let's just say it drops right now, you know, 20 points, okay? So if the um, down moves down 20 points right now, what will this binary be worth that I just sold? Okay, well, uh, if I sold it, and then all I got to do is go, okay, well, I sold the 13 to 50. So if I go down here a little ways, 20 points, so it'll be worth $80, all right? And um, which is really good for me because I'm actually going to be you know, buying it back. So I want to make sure that I can look at that price ladder and see what's the new value. And um, I can go down, I can go up. So if I'm selling, I actually want to go up because think about this. This is the price ladder. This is the bid-ask quotes of all the strikes. They're all 20 apart on the Dow, on the daily on the Dow. They're all 20 apart. So if the market goes down, then this price will become this price. This price will become this price. Basically, each price will move down one strike. So if it goes down 20 points, then the one that I sold for 69.50 will become worth $47. If it goes up, the one that I sold for 69.50 will be worth 78.50. Okay? So that lets me know on a price movement, absent of time, what will it be worth? And it helps you sort of judge where your take profit level could be, like if you wanted to get out of a certain strike. Now, something that's really important to understand is that is price absent of time. Like I said, as things move closer to expiration, these things get really, really volatile, okay? And also the time premium can sort of get sucked out of them. So it could actually go from a winning trade to a losing trade really quick, just over, you know, like 30 minutes, because that time starts to decay. How long is it going to take before that positive trade becomes a negative trade, okay? So basically you're looking at this whole, you know, theta timeline and it's, you know, you don't have to worry about theta. You don't have to get into that. And uh, But if you do want to see sort of how the theta works, there is a there is a way to look at it. Let's see if I can find you a good example here. And um, let's see. These expire at 4 or 15, I believe. Okay, so and they're, they're not exactly even. There we go. Okay, 13, 4, 10. We're gonna do is we're gonna find a one to three o'clock. Thirteen two eighty two, thirteen two ninety, thirteen three twenty two, thirteen three thirty. What you could do is like, okay, this thirteen three thirty, and I go over here, and I go okay, thirteen three forty. All right, so there, I mean, there's definitely ten points of difference, so it's not a perfect example. But when you can find ones that line up at the exact same time, and I have done that, and I'll go in, I'll actually look at them, and you can see that you know there may be a seven dollar, you know, difference, um, really in you know a per hour basis, okay, on a value that can get sucked out of the option after an hour, and uh, so you go in, you get several hours. That's where a lot of that premium comes from. Anyway, stay right there. We'll come right back, and we'll go through a few more of the deviation levels for the day. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus
prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, I'm just going to wrap up. So we have one binary play on, the other one we had on. We took it off as a quick example to show you how quick these things can move. And uh, we went in and basically made a $20 profit on it in a couple minutes. And uh, right now, if you still had that trade on, uh, we sold it some, somewhere on 47 I believe. And um, I guess I can check over here in the order history on it. And uh, open that up. Let's see here. We sold it originally for uh, 44 Okay. Oh, let's see. I actually filled at 46 Even better. So, um, so they gave me even a better fill than when I put it in. So we sold it at 46 and we bought it back, like I said, seconds later, 26 we made $20 on the trade. Well, that same trade, if you're still in it, is this binary right here. It has about five minutes left till expiration, and uh, you can actually buy it back for $3.50 now. So you could have made about $40 in the last you know, 20 or so minutes on that trade, or a couple dollars in just a matter of you know, a couple minutes. I like it when I go in and make some money quick and uh, get out of the trade. So the, you know, all the risk is gone, and I uh, can just take you know, advantage of that trade. And, um, you know, it's, it's really nice when you can get a one that's really close. Like, we've already busted through, but when you can get one that's really close, a binary, 
um, to a strike right near expiration because it will just fly up and down. It'll go like two dollars, ten dollars, two dollars, fifty dollars. I mean, it'll literally go like seventy, twenty, and it'll just fly all over the place. So anytime you can find a binary strike uh, right where the market's at within like the last thirty minutes before um, expiration, you can get a lot of volatility in there. And uh, these are binary ladders versus your up down binaries. Okay, so. Um, you know, your up down binaries, like you'll see on a lot of these, you know, Cypress exchanges, which aren't really exchanges. This, yeah, there's not really a, they're just over the counter, you know, um, binaries and with, you know, some company and some other country that's regulated by some exchange you've never heard of before. And, uh, you know, they have like buy or sell your dollar and you put up 50 bucks or you put up a hundred bucks. Uh, let's we'll say you put up a hundred. The most you can make is 70, maybe $80 on the trade ever. Period, and you have to hold it by the way till expiration. You couldn't get in and get out thirty seconds later or five minutes later. You know, you have to hold it till expiration, whether that be a year or a day or ten minutes. Um, well, on the ladders, you have all these different strikes, so you can be neutral on the trade, you can straddle the trade, you can get. Also, they're not locked, so you can get in, you can get out before expiration. So there's just a lot of really, really cool ways to trade them. And as you can see, I mean, the Dow is just pushing down, pushing down, pushing down. It allows us to go with a really low risk trade and take advantage of it. And uh, so there's just different ways that you can go in and say, hey, you know, I want to, you know, trade the Dow. What can I do? So that's looking at your binaries and uh, different trades that you can do on that. And, you know, again, we got the one to three o'clock one still going. And um, I can show you this one here. Uh, let's see, go back, open up our open positions. And, you know, so we're sort of waiting on this one. Now, by the way, you have the uh, three quarks, so that are were at the money. They were about 50 bucks, and now they've dropped down a little bit as it keeps going. So, so you're getting another opportunity to do it all over again, okay? And, um, and then you have the dailies. So the dailies as the market's moving down, a little volatility in there picking up. So we'll see how it uh, ends up. But uh, as time goes by, okay, and this is something interesting to note. It's like we sold it right around here. Time has went by, but I haven't really made anything, Okay because I sold it and so there's less chance it'll be in the money and even though it's went down a little bit so I was I needed to move down a little bit faster um, in order to make a profit on that trade and uh, you know I can always cut my loss too by the way okay so I can go in and go you know what I know it's limited risk but I thought this thing was really gonna keep moving and so I'm just gonna shut it down and I'm gonna have a you know seven dollar loss on the trade that's an option I have that's not a bad way to trade right cutting your losses so your risk is always capped, but sometimes, you know, if you're doing a trade and it's just not going how you think it's going to go, just get out. Anyway, so there's a quick summary for you on binary trading. Went a little bit into the deviation levels today. Hope you all pick some stuff out of it. Give me a call with any questions. I will talk to you tomorrow from 1 to 2 Eastern time. Thanks for being on the Diagnostic Trading Hour.